we arrived safe and sound. We are in Alberta. It was a 15 hour drive to get to Uncle Rick's. We got there at around 12.30, quarter to one local time. Got straight to bed. Woke up at quarter after five and another five hour drive, got all packed up and everything. Another five hour drive into uh, the Lac La Biche area and into the area that we camp. Another three hours to get camp all set up, another hour of cutting firewood and getting things sorted out, and then finally, it's about uh, it's about 4.30, almost 5 o'clock now, local time, and we just finally got to take the quads out, me and Uncle Randy. Um, we've been just itching, obviously, since we left Manitoba. We've just been itching to get out. So we finally got the quads out, so I'm sitting on my wood pile. I've got a wood pile. This whole area, as you can see, all around me has been logged out. So there's this big cut block that I'm sitting and watching. And I'm on top of a big burn pile. So all the scrap wood, they pile it up in big piles and then it uh, gets burnt. So I'm sitting on top of one of those right now and I have an awesome view. Everything you know, it's sort of downhill for me. I'm up high. I just have a great view. I got some nice tree lines. And then these fresh cut blocks, they really attract a lot of deer for whatever reason. I really don't know why. But uh, this time of year, um, you know, Uncle Rick hunts here all the time and he's the uh, the expert for this area. He told us, sit on the cut blocks. That's our best chance. We did some quadding around. We just checked out some trails real quick. We don't, you know, we don't have a lot of time tonight. Um, and now we're just sitting, I'm sitting on this wood pile, Uncle Randy's up the trail on a different wood pile. And it's gorgeous out. It is so awesome. Uh, I'm just so happy right now to be out in the bush and hunting and watching for deer. And I don't even, I'm, you know, I might see a bunch of deer and not even shoot them today. I'm just happy to be out and see some nature for a change. And that's not just in my backyard and walking trails and stuff. And uh, the camp is going to be awesome. We got everything set up. But you just can't beat the weather. The weather, it's it's plus like 14 right now. In the middle of October. It's crazy. I have my, uh, my neck warmer on just because I was on the quad and the wind is a little chilly. But I'm sitting here now in the sun and I'm just actually just baking. I am ridiculously hot. I'm actually going to start sweating here pretty soon uh it's crazy it's just it's a weird year it, the weather is weird but i'm thankful for it i'm just happy to be out here i got such a great view um we've cut, it's a big change from the last time we were here we were here two years ago and this was all bush there was no cut down trees or anything here there was no trails here there was no road the forest that's back there it was all the way through here so this all of this cutting is just in the last season uh, so it's kind of interesting just to see how the landscape changes. Like we usually come here, this is our third year here, and we missed last year, but we were here the two years previous. And so you start to get familiar with an area, and you start to get really comfortable with your, your spots and what's going to be a good hunting spot and where you always see animals. And all of that has changed this year. All of that is just out the window because they've been in here logging. Um, it's interesting. It's going to be a fun challenge because we got to find some new spots for one which you know is is fun and it's a challenge and it's tough but that also means that we get to just spend probably all day tomorrow quadding around checking out these cut blocks checking out all these new areas checking out all these new logging roads that have been put in and finding all these new areas that previously we would never have been able to get to so a lot of these logging roads go into areas that before there was no trails there so we would never have gotten back into some of these areas i'm actually the field that i'm sitting in right now uh, i'm familiar with the general area we have been around here but i've never been in the middle here so it's kind of cool that way so it's really, really interesting just the way the landscape here changes with the forestry and everything that goes on here. Um, it's a lot of fun. I can't wait to uh, tomorrow get out and do a, basically a full day of just exploring and, and getting oriented. It's going to be a blast. Cell reception is pretty spotty, so you might be watching this and I might already be three or four days into my hunt, um, depending on where I can find a signal to uh, to upload. But uh <laughs> I'll uh, I'll record a bunch of videos, and even if you're watching them later than they actually happened, I'll uh, 
it, it should be good. I'm hoping to have uh, some success. I'm hoping to have some deer to show everybody. And uh, either way, it's going to be a good time. I get to see Gary, get to see Uncle Rick and Uncle Randy and spend a whole week with them. It's going to be awesome. So stay tuned. I'm back from the morning hunt a little bit early. Uh, I'm just getting ready to do the dishes here from uh, last night's meal while I wait for everybody else. Figured it would be a good time to do a quick little tour of the camp. Quad parking, important. Our awesome view, also important. We got our fire pit. We have our kitchen setup, which is amazing. This is Uncle Rick's setup. We have the grill, a little propane oven, the whole works. We got lots of table space. It's all full of junk and booze and snacks and all the good stuff. Big picnic table for eating. It's all tarped in, so it's covered. You can see we have a string of lights up there from uh, the generator. We have power at night, so we're, it's all lit up for dinner. We have our tent, which is all tarped over again, and it is a big canvas prospector's tent so it's set up with wooden poles so we set up a main beam we have some posts supporting the main beam that main beam runs all the way across the top the tent hangs from it and then we have this the side support beams as well that we ran so we got a main beam and then two side support beams and you get this awesome, huge area. We have a wood stove. We have our two uh, bunk beds and then another bed back in the corner there because there's five of us. And a little wood pile. It's, we've got some old carpet that we laid down to keep comfy. It's, uh, it's home sweet home, basically. We have, on top of all that, all of you know, pots and pans and propane and everything. We got a huge area back here for parking and we put uh, more storage bins for dishes and stuff and all that and whatever else we need. We got extra water. If we want to move a trailer back here or move one of our vehicles back here, we got tons of space. So walking out, very important, the game pole, old school, just lashed a beam across two trees. As soon as we get some deer, we'll start making use of it, hopefully. And tons more space, tons more space. Way back, way back in the bush there. Somewhere back there. Covered by a green tarp is our fancy toilet. We actually have a box with a toilet seat on it with the hole dug underneath it. And there's a tarp hanging over it in case it snows or rains. It's the <laughs> pinnacle of luxury as far as camping goes. And then this is just the backside of the tent and the kitchen area. So like I said, kitchen area all tarped in. The tent is a canvas tent, but we tarp it over as well, just because, you know, extra protection. He's had the prospector's tent for 30 years and he, he's used it for 25 of those years. And this is why he's able to do that, is because he takes care of it. You can see our chimney from our wood stove out there. And yeah, it's a really neat setup. It's hard to tell by looking under the tarp, but you can see we got our support beams here. So big triangle that we make out of posts and then the main beam sits on that triangle. And we string everything up um, off of that main beam. It is basically just a whole full-size tree that we use for that beam so it's strong it's a pain to get up there but that's it there that's the main beam and it goes the whole length of the kitchen and tent area 
and but once it's up there it's solid and everything hangs off that everything is supported from that and we have all the comforts of home so that's our camp it's pretty awesome and I mean what can I say you can't beat waking up getting out of the tent and having this as your view you can't beat it I love it out here um, I got a few more things around the area that I want to show you I'll do that in other videos um, going forward here the next couple days hopefully I'll continue to find good reception to actually upload them um, but if not well I'll post them all when I get back either way stay with me watch the rest of the videos if uh, you're interested thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one One of the interesting things about hunting out here in Alberta is that we are right in the middle of active logging operations and so in the videos where we're hunting you'll see or some of my updates you'll see I'm sitting on a wood pile or I'm sitting in a cut block or we're traveling cut blocks and this is what I'm talking about we're talking about a block that has been clear cut over the last little while so this has all been clear cut since the last time we were here last year and it looks devastating and really it is in this small spot but the great thing about the forestry operations here in Alberta is they'll do this clear cutting and it really makes for some great hunting we have these wood piles um, so this is all the scrap wood and all the stuff that they uh, that they don't haul away this stuff actually gets burnt down so the nutrients go back into the soil um, we got the piles of logs here this is the stuff that they'll actually be hauling away and so trucks are in here pretty constantly um, on certain roads loading these up and hauling them away so eventually all that will be left is these big wood piles which will get burnt down um, to kind of clean up the area here and then the great thing is when forestry and sustainable development and all that stuff is done right you have this awesome hunting area here that you can use for a couple years and it'll be sort of this barren area for a couple years but here's an example of a block that was replanted um, so this would have been cut five years ago six years ago something like that they come in they replant everything and you get this new growth and within a few years it starts sprouting up and give it you know five six seven years and you'll have all these trees up again so on this side you know it's this clear-cut area and it looks devastating it looks like you're destroying this huge section of forest which you are but at the same time they're doing that they're also replanting old sections and so all these new sections of forest are coming up and the new habitat is coming up so there's there is definitely an impact on the forest but it's minimized and they're doing everything they need to do to get it back and, and the animals and everything still have homes they're not they're not just coming in here and just wiping everything out and leaving so it's really nice to see 
when I come here, you know, we were here three years ago um, and this hadn't been replanted yet. It was just, it looked barren. It was it had just been clear cut. It's really nice when you come back and you see that all this new growth popping up and eventually, I mean, it'll all look like that forest back there. These trees will all grow and it'll just be a new section of forest. So every block that they're taking out and making look like this, they're also replanting and making it look like that and eventually it will look back like that. And it goes in cycles and they're doing it in a really sustainable way. So it's always nice to see that. And it's really cool to be out here hunting while this is all going on and just see it year to year from the clear cutting to the replanting. When that actually gets grown in enough, what they do is they do something called reclaiming. So all these logging roads that are running through here, for example, so when this new growth gets up high enough, these roads will actually, they'll come through with a big machine and they'll drag these roads up, make them really rough and bumpy and so that you can't drive on them. Um, and they do that to close off access to, into that back section of that forest. <coughs> Excuse me. So they do that so that the forest then isn't getting disturbed and it actually goes back to a natural state. It's awesome to see. It means that every year we come here, things are changing. Trails aren't where they used to be. Things have been reclaimed and we can no longer have access to them or it's a lot harder to access them. Um, and we got new clear cut areas, we got new growth areas. It's just, it's really, really cool to see. It's really cool to be in the middle of it uh, year to year and just the updates of it all. Uh, it really makes you appreciate when you're out here and you see the scale of the operation going on. I mean, I'm in a very small section and way back there you can see that, you know, it's all cut all the way back there. You can see this big cut block. This is actually a really small, small piece of it. We actually dro drove around this morning and we go for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. And it's all these, you know, different sections. So the scale of it and the scale of what they do and then the scale of the reclamation and turning it back to nature. It's just really, really impressive. You really don't appreciate it until you get out here and you're right in the middle of it and also trying to hunt in the middle of it. So, I mean, it's really, really cool. It's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, it's been a slow week. Uh, Uncle Randy's got one on the pole, a young doe, very young. Gary took a shot, took two shots actually, and missed both. Uh, Uncle Rick has seen a bunch, hasn't got a shot. I haven't even seen any yet. Our other, the other guy that's with us, John, has seen a bunch, hasn't got a shot. So it's just been a really tough hunting week. But I mean, as you can see, the weather here is amazing. And being able to just see the operations going on here and see how it's changed from last year has been just rewarding in and of itself. So, I mean, he can't beat it. I got no complaints whatsoever. Hopefully tonight I'll get something on the pole, but I mean I could go home empty-handed this week and it will still be have been just an amazing trip. It's just always awesome to be out here. So I'm gonna get back on the quad and get back to hunting and hopefully get something on the pole. day in hunting camp here in Alberta. It's been a really slow weekend so far. We're on uh, Monday now. Yesterday we had seen a bunch. Uncle Randy actually shot one, a really young doe. Um, we're all making fun of him for the size but realistically he's the only one that's got anything on the game pole right now so we can't make fun too much. Uncle Rick hasn't uh, gotten a shot off. He's seen a bunch. He hasn't gotten a chance to take a shot. John has seen a bunch, hasn't got a chance to take a shot. I haven't seen anything yet. Gary has uh, taken a couple shots and missed, so we're all razzing him pretty good. He's actually just uh, in the last few minutes, he just left to go back to school. So it is John, Uncle Rick, Uncle Randy, and myself left. Hopefully, we will get something else on the pole tonight. Otherwise, it's going to be a very somber dinner.
last day in camp here in Alberta, last day of hunting. We had a pretty eventful morning. We actually saw five deer total. So me and Uncle Rick and Uncle Randy were quadding down the road and uh, off on this one trail. Just going nice putt, putt, putt. Wouldn't you know it? I haven't seen anything this whole time here. I've seen one head which quickly disappeared, like before we could even stop the quads. I saw the the head of one doe um, back on Saturday. That was it. That's all I've seen for this whole week that we've been here. Today, I saw five. The first two, I was riding with Uncle Randy. I was on my quad here on the back seat like I'm sitting right now. He was driving. I had my rifle in one hand, I was taking some footage in the other, so I had my little handheld. We were just going pretty slow, put the camera away and wasn't holding on to the handles. Wouldn't you know it, we turn the corner and there's two does standing there, right in the middle of the road, or the trail. And so, we all, I'm the only one, Uncle Randy's already shot a deer. So I'm the one that still needs to fill my out-of-province tag. So Uncle Rick wasn't going to shoot. So Uncle Randy slams on the brakes, ducks his head down for me to shoot over him. And, of course, I wasn't holding on. So right over his shoulder. Practically right over his shoulder. So I am hanging off the front of the quad here, off the side. I got one hand holding on to Uncle Randy's shoulder, holding my rifle up in my other hand and I'm hanging on I'm clawing my way trying to get back up into my seat they're both not aware of this because they are both staring at the deer and watching the deer knowing that I wanted to take the shot so sure enough I'm hanging off Uncle Randy pull myself back up I get myself stood back up in onto the seat line up the rifle um, line up the deer in the scope and it's already running away the second one was already moving so I had a quick second to line up a broadside shot I zinged it completely off target and they both just ran off but I mean that's my own fault it was kind of funny after the fact because they're both standing there thinking to themselves why isn't he shooting what's going on here does it really take him this long to line up a shot and meanwhile I'm practically on the ground trying to scramble my way back up uh, behind Uncle Randy. He didn't even notice that I was basically hanging off of him after he stopped, but he hit the brakes so hard I just went <laughs> I just went straight over basically his his left shoulder. So, yeah, that was yeah, not my uh, finest moment. Funny story, but uh we we go around the corner not 5 minutes later. This time I'm holding on and this time I'm ready. But not 5 minutes later. Uh, we see another doe standing in in the, in the middle of the trail. And so this time, Uncle Rick wastes no time. He's not waiting for me. <laughs> he, he takes the shot. He drops it. I got a chicken while they were doing that. Um, so we took that back to camp, got it hung, got it cleaned, all that fun stuff. Um, me and Uncle Rick went back out, and we went a long way. We were out on the quads for another probably two and a half hours, um, finally, on our way back, actually, near the camp, saw another two does standing right off the trail. And because we had already had the to two deer down, I didn't care. We had two on the pole. I didn't care if I shot one or not. Um, but Uncle Rick was under the impression that I specifically wanted to shoot the next one. And he was standing there waiting for me to take the shot. So he pulled up. I hit the brakes, we came around the corner, I hit the brakes as soon as I saw it, and he hit the brakes just a second or so after me, but he ended up um, a little ways in front of me. So he's got his rifle lined up and he's got the scope on them, and I'm back on my quad and I'm standing here, and I'm watching him and I'm going, why isn't he shooting? What's going on here? Does he not have a shot? And meanwhile, he's standing there, <laughs> 
under the impression that I needed to be the one that that shot it, which I didn't care. So he's standing there, lining them up in his scope and going, oh, come on, why isn't Adam taking a shot? What's going on here? What's the problem? So they both just slowly walk away. He turns and looks back at me, and I'm looking up ahead of him like, what are you doing? Why didn't you shoot? He looks back at me. What are you doing? Why didn't you shoot? I'm going, I'm not going to shoot. You're standing right in front of me. I was just watching. He's like, I was just watching because you were supposed to shoot. <laughs> so a bit of a miscommunication there. Had a little bit of a laugh over that. Got back to camp, got cleaned up and everything. We had our chances. Got a couple funny stories. We still got the one from this morning. Uncle Randy's got his one from the other day. So we still have two on the pole. We're not going home empty handed. Uh, we'll get every, we'll, we'll all get some meat. But yeah, it's just funny, you know, sometimes just a little bit of a miscommunication. Uh, and with me and Uncle Rick, you know, he thought that I needed to shoot it. I, just, I didn't care who who shot it. You know, we had the other tag. Just fill the tag as far as I'm concerned. I don't really care. Um, we should have probably established that before uh, we left. <laughs> so we actually knew what we were doing instead of both, literally both just standing there and watching two deer slowly walk away. And then, you know, the one where I fell off the quad, basically. <laughs> That's my own fault for not hanging on. Uncle Randy braked kind of hard, I will say, but, you know, it's still my own fault. I still should have been holding on. I shouldn't have, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have been that uh, loosey-goosey in my seat that I went ass over tea kettle. But what can you do? That's hunting. Funny things happen sometimes. Sometimes you miss. Sometimes you hit. Sometimes you don't see anything, like the last few days. Uh, it's just the way it goes. It's still a great time, so... Today's our last night. I'm probably going to still go out for mainly just a quad ride. At this point, we're kind of all cleaned up and we've got a bunch of stuff packed up already. So not even sure if I'm going to really shoot anything tonight. I say that now, but we'll see if I see anything. Um, but, and then tomorrow, we pack everything up. It's back on the road to Uncle Rick's for a day. And then uh, from there, it's back on the road, the long, long drive home. So it's been a crazy week. It's been so much fun. You can see the weather here has just been beautiful all week it's been great yeah so uh, I am gonna head back to camp we're going to basically get loaded up for the evening uh, Uncle Rick's probably just gonna stay in camp get supper going and I'm gonna figure out where I want to go take a quad ride to so